I'd like to talk about one of the tools that I'm using for carving necks. Now this is an old Stanley number 63 spoke shape. Now what makes this a little bit different, one is it's, it's pretty small and it just has a single screw here to hold the blade in and it has a curved sole. Okay, this is important. The uh, device, this is the device that it replaces. Now this is actually extremely good. I have no idea who made this. There's no markings on it. It has a bone sole and it has a blade that is adjusted with, with pins here. And those pins are part of the blade. And it has a quite an arch on it in, in this direction as well as this direction. Okay, so very interesting little tool. I have no idea where you would get something like this. It's one of those things that I found years ago. Now this was supposed to replace it and it comes close. Both of them have, have similar characteristics and I wanted to, to show you th these things just in passing here. So let's get down to the work. Let's uh, drop this down. Hopefully we're close enough to, to see what's going on. Now, this wood is fairly heavily rowed, R-O-E-D. And what that means is that the grain goes this way and this way. Okay, that's why there's such a contrast between the stripes. And what that means is that it is hell on wheels to try to carve this stuff with regular blades. Now these blades are different in that you don't jam the thing down and pull across with these. You have different settings based on how you actually use the tool. So one of the things is to do what I call really a scrape, a scraper cut. And that's just to hold it lightly down. Just make sure the blade is engaged, but don't put a lot of pressure behind it. You're not trying to ream out as much material as you possibly can. You're trying to just basically scrape this. So we're using the spoke shave as a scraper at this point. And that avoids a lot of, of problems with this road grain, which, which will scrape fine, but when you really dig in with a plane or something, it just tears all the smithereens. So here I've got a, a stripe where the grain is going this direction, up like this. So it's very easy to take a, a piece off like that. And I could bear down on this and get quite a bit more. Right next to it, this lighter streak, hopefully you can see that, is actually going the other direction. Okay, so when I bear down on this, it will tear out like crazy. Not a good look. Now I can either go this direction, which is fraught with a little danger as, as we go in various places, or I can just use the same basic kind of light pass, the scraping pass on that too, and it will actually work. Now in some places where the grain is running out a little bit more, I may have to actually angle this instead of coming at it straight on angle it so it's doing a shearing cut and that will get me past the areas that otherwise would chatter and if they don't chatter they will tear out so especially on this particular side of the neck this area right here is all going the other direction going that way very light cut using this or this either one 
takes it off very nicely. Now this neck is, is a little wider than most. This is a one and seven eighths inch neck. It's made for finger style playing with people like me who have fat fingers, short fat fingers. So <clears throat> a little bit more of a classical feel on this, but because of the fact that it's got a nice big heavy truss rod in it, or it will, just see that it slides right in. Voila. That cavity in there means that I need a little bit more height here than I would put normally on a classical guitar. Which is why I'm doing this as kind of a V shape uh, pattern. Now, if I had a thinner fretboard on this, I might not do that so much. But the first <clears throat> first double O guitar I had, double uh, O twenty one or something like that, with a dark top, <clears throat> had a profile like this. So I don't really feel like this is going to some weird place. That you know, way back when, before they used truss rods, all the necks were V shaped. They were that way to keep the pull of the strings from pulling the neck forward too much. So historically this is a, a time-honored tradition here. So anyway, just babbling on, I need to get this down to where it's about 22 millimeters thick. And m normally my classical guitars would be 20 millimeters thick. The only part of this that's going to be that thick is right there in the center where the truss rod is. So getting close, I've got about uh, a couple millimeters to go. So I'll leave you with that, those thoughts. Doesn't matter one way or the other.